Hi guys, Lindsay here with Storybrook Family Farms. Today I was at Tractor Supply and seen that they started having chick days again, and I figured I would talk about raising bantam chickens. Me and my wife, we do not raise regular sized chickens for a few different reasons, and back when we first started raising chickens, I had a ton of questions about bantam chickens, but I couldn't find anybody that actually like talked about them or raised them or anything. Like, sure, you could find out online that, yeah, they weigh up to two pounds, but Seriously, does anybody know the size of a two-pound chicken? Like, does anybody have any idea as to how big a live two-pound chicken is? Because we had no idea. Like, we asked everybody. I asked my grandpa. I asked anybody in my family that had ever farmed or raised chickens, how big is a bantam? And they said, oh, they're pretty small. But how small really is pretty small? Everything you see says, oh, well, their eggs are small. But how small is small? So today I figured I would show you how small really is small. So right behind me here, we have some of our different Bantam hens. They are about the size of a dove. They do not eat very much food at all. They eat probably about the same amount as maybe a third of a chicken. So a 50 pound bag of feed, which in my area costs us about $22 a bag. It is not organic feed. We prefer to support local businesses versus prioritizing raising our chickens as all organic. We don't want to spend the same amount of money to support a big company as we could spend to support a local business that has been family run for many, many years and many generations. We'd rather keep things local. So that bag of feed costs us about $22 for a 50 pound bag of feed. Our chickens, um, it... They go through, and we have probably close to 40 Bantam chickens, and we also raise three ducks. Um, it takes about a week and a half to two weeks to go through that 50-pound bag of feed. Mind you, this is winter time, so this is when the birds are going to eat the absolute most feed that they're ever going to eat. Because throughout the summer, they will forage for more grass and for bugs and things like that. So they're very economical from a feed standpoint. Um... And their egg size, I'll grab a couple here real quick that were just laid today. Their egg size, if you can see next to my face is a good comparison. They are roughly like, mm, probably 75% of a store-bought egg. So if you normally would eat two store-bought large eggs, um, you would eat three of the Bantam eggs. So the feed to egg ratio, it's a heck of a lot cheaper to feed the Bantams and if you're anything like us, we kind of are obsessed with chickens and crossbreeding them and having a beautiful flock that has multiple different color varieties in them and stuff. Um, so we really enjoy having just a ton of chickens, like way more than we need to and stuff. Another good perk about the Bantams is that they really, really like to hatch out their own eggs. So even some of our breeds that are said to not really like going broody and not really like hatching out their own eggs, they actually do. At least ours do. Um, so they pretty much are continuously just trying to hatch out more eggs. So if you're looking at raising chickens from a purely sustainable food source way and stuff, the Bantams are a great way to go because you can have your own regenerating flock um, without even investing into an incubator because the Bantam birds, no matter what breed they are, really like to hatch out eggs. I think they're just bored and want new friends or something. I'm not really sure. But so if you're looking at it from a sustainability standpoint, Bantams really are a great way to go because any of the extra roosters, which are tend to hatch out extra roosters for us. So, I mean, it's kind of neat, I guess. Um, any of the extra roosters that we end up having, we usually end up sending them to freezer camp. So then that way it's kind of a bonus perk of, you know, if we let the hen hatch out, um, three eggs, a lot of times one of them will be a hen, two will be a rooster. So that way we get an extra egg layer and then we have another um, source of protein and stuff like that. Um, so they do take longer than raising regular meat birds to, to raise out and stuff, but they're so small that they don't really eat that much food. And you could always, you know, process them at a younger age and stuff like that. But um, yeah, they start laying sooner than regular chickens. Regular chickens is five to six months when they start laying. And these guys, it's usually about four and a half months in our experience for the average of all of the breeds that we raise. Um, so it's it's a pretty quick turnover. Um, and they don't take up much space at all. Each of the birds, they're about the same size as a dove or a robin. Um, here's some more of ours. So 
they're they're really not um very big they probably stand maybe seven to eight inches tall at the tallest and that's that's for some of our roosters that stand that tall um, another neat perk about them is that they actually love to forage for their own feed they can fly better than regular chickens so the chances of them getting attacked by predators ground predators is a lot smaller because they're very very diligent and stuff of paying attention especially if you, especially if you have roosters like him right there he um we call him one of our aerial roosters because he loves to fly up high and just keep a watch over everybody and stuff so they'll actually fly out of our our four foot fence um for our pasture and go hang out with the goats half the time they lay eggs with the goat pasture area so it's it's kind of fun um, going on little Easter egg hunts every single day and stuff. And, you know, some people might not enjoy that, but it's kind of neat and stuff that, you know, you can find all their new safe hiding spots and, and things like that. And it really gives you a true experience of a farm fresh egg, um, having to go and search for it and stuff. And it kind of like revitalizes the inner child in you to be like, oh, I wonder where the eggs could be at today. Like, oh man, could you believe that they hid them underneath this tractor? Like what made them think that that was a great spot? But, you know, some people don't want that. Some people don't want to enjoy their food. And, you know, that's that's fine. Like, you know, we don't raise things for simplicity. We raise things because we actually enjoy them. So um, that's part of why we like the Bantams so much and everything. And plus, you know, it's really just super cute to watch the chickens just sort of peck around and scratch around at things all the time. And just, you know have a good old time and stuff like that. And also it's kind of neat to go, oh, I actually had the rooster that created this one and 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 this one. Like our first ever rooster, he was, he was a frizzle. So every bird that is like this one here with some crazy looking feathers was all from him. Now, he has since passed away, which was a very, very sad day when that happened. Um, but it's neat getting to see all of his lineage continue on and stuff for generation after generation after generation and stuff. So it's just, it's a beautiful process to go, oh, I knew your great, 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 great grandfather. And he was a wonderful guy. So if you're considering Bantams and stuff or getting chickens, period, I would highly recommend going with Bantams to start with. Plus, they're easier for children to manage. They're easier to care for. And if you have any experience like me and my wife do, we secretly raised these guys in our garage for over two years. And we had a rooster. So if you're... He's a little noisy because it's getting close to bedtime. But um, if you're thinking about raising chickens and you don't necessarily want a ton of attention or you just don't have enough, very much space for them, everything the coop that we house them in is as you can see it's it's really not very big um it was actually a repurposed greenhouse that i built when we lived back in town but um these birds are just they're super super simple to take care of they don't take up much space they don't take up much time and they don't eat anywhere near as much food as a full-size bird and full-size roosters can honestly be a little bit intimidating but these guys they really they really are not intimidating at all even for small children so if you're considering chickens, I would highly recommend starting out with Bantams. Um, now that we have more property and more area that, that they can roam, we have never once thought about getting a larger breed. So that should say a lot, especially since, you know, feed prices are really skyrocketing right now and stuff. And they lay, they lay pretty consistently a large amount of eggs every single day. Um, right now we're getting at least a dozen every day and it's the beginning of March, which is kind of really early and a bit unheard of, but throughout the winter we were fully able to get enough eggs that we could even sell some extra. And, you know, some of our hens, some of the breeds and stuff aren't that great of producers and stuff like that, but other ones, you know, make up for it and stuff. But so those are my thoughts on Bantam chickens. And if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Um, if you're liking the content and stuff, um, please like it and subscribe and feel free to share everything on your social media. Thank you very much. Have a great day.